just like four pages. An hour later, you pulled up. It didn't matter where I was, how late you were, how angry we were with each other when you dropped me off. Nothing on earth felt as good as watching you pull up in your Nova to pick me up. I love you, I told you as I got out of the Nova. You didn't say anything. I love you, I said again. Your right cheek was quivering. You ain't hear me leaving the messages? Put your seatbelt on, you said in the most brittle voice I'd ever heard come out of your head. You just started making me wear my seatbelt a week earlier. I put the seatbelt on when a round, clear tear slid down your cheek. The tear slowed down, sped up, past your thin top lip and slipped into the black corner of your mouth. I'd seen you cry when you talked to me about your grades, when you lied about having more money than you did, or when you created some strange lie about why my father did not give him, give us child support. I put my left hand on your right fist, the one you used to steer the Nova. How come you can't look at me? You stopped the Nova at the stop sign on the corner of Beasley and Hanging Moss and slowly turned your face to mine. The white of your left eye was filled with a cloud of blood. The brown flesh around the eye was darker and puffed up twice its normal size. It looked like someone put a tiny plum right under your eyelid. When we got to the house, you knew what I was gonna get. You pushed me away and rushed to the room. I watched you lift your pillow up where you kept your gun. If I got to it first, you know I would use it. Instead of going to my room, I got ice, napkins, a jar of pear preserves, a spoon, and a butcher knife. You gotta be still for real, I told you, wiping the dried blood off your face with thumbs wet from my saliva. Have to be, you said. Don't say gotta. Gotta, I said. Gotta. They gotta have fleas over there at Beulah Buford House. The fleas over there, they gotta be the maddest fleas in the world, the way they be biting folks all upside the head. Gotta. You laughed so hard and told me not to use the word be like that. I hoped you'd never stop laughing. I don't want no pear preserves, Key, you told me. Not now. How come? They're too sweet, you told me. When you finally put your arm around my neck, I felt all of your weight. Hold me tight, you said from our bed. You're my best friend, and I'm sorry. I heard you say as you fell asleep with the covers covering the swollen, slick parts of your cheeks. I'm sorry for all this. You're my best friend too, I told you. My best friend ever. Lying next to you in that bed, I remember the first time you told me I was your best friend. I knew you kissed my cheeks because you loved me. I knew you asked me to hold you tighter because you loved me. You were so gentle. For more than a year, this was how we spent some of our mornings in my room and yours. And then you met Malachi Hunter. A few weeks later, you started to beat me for talking back and for my way less than excellent grades. Sometimes you'd beat me upside the head. Sometimes you'd beat me across the hand. Sometimes you'd beat me as hard as you could in my cheeks with belts, shoes, fists, clothes hangers. I remember making, I remember you making me take off my clothes and lie across the same bed that we slept in. I don't think I've ever screamed like that. You made me put my face down in the bed so I couldn't brace myself and as much as the lashes hurt, knowing you were beating me at nine years old as hard as you could while looking at my fat, naked black body hurt way more. The tear in the flesh hurt less than it should have, I think though, because I knew you didn't really wanna hurt me. I knew you didn't wanna hurt me because sometimes you touched me like you loved me. I just wish you could have chosen one kind of touch even if it meant beating me in my face 10 times a day, every day for the rest of my life. You were still snoring when Malachi Hunter pulled his black Volvo into our driveway. You woke up when I tried to kill a revolutionary black man from Mississippi that night. Two hours later, you and Malachi Hunter took one glass of wine to your bedroom from my bed, I heard long tail rats hiking through our walls and wet tires skating past our windows. I heard John, Johnny Carson's nasal monologue. 
I couldn't hear your voice, the only voice I wanted to hear when I woke up, the last voice I wanted to hear before going to sleep. I opened the bedroom door, walked down the hall a few feet from your bedroom. Behind a locked door, Malachi Hunter said he was sorry for punching you in your face. Sorry for making you bleed. Sorry for fighting your son. Sorry for punishing you for wanting to know the truth. You told Malachi Hunter that you wanted a daughter and you were sorry for running away. I went back to my room and heard your bedroom door unlock and lock again. The many squeaks from your bed got louder. I got on my knees and prayed to God not to hear you wailing under the weight of the revolutionary black man from Mississippi. I hated my body. I walked in the kitchen, got the biggest spoon I could find and dipped it halfway in the peanut butter and pear preserves grandmama had given us. I heard the wailing all the way in the kitchen. I dipped the same spoon a quarter deep into grandmama's pear preserves and put the whole spoon deep into my cheeks. I did it again and again and again until the peanut butter was gone, but the wailing did not stop. And I hated my body. Before leaving the kitchen, I gulped down a few mason jars of box wine until I forgot the shape of the sound I was running from. When I was supposed to be finishing my report for you on Fannie Lou Hamer, I wrote instead about losing my 12 year old heavy black body to an emergency, I was too sad, too drunk, and really too terrified to identify. Early the next morning, I had my first wet dream. I was afraid to tell you what my body did while you were there with Malachi Hunter because I knew you'd ask me why. Though I never wanted you to touch me or talk to me again, I didn't want to lie to you. Lying to you felt like cheating and cheating felt like something that I never wanted to do not to my best friend